Before starting this video, please if you will find it helpful, don't forget about me and find Patreon and PayPal links in description. Let's go! Hello everyone, this is me, Andrew. Today I'll show you how to make login with Kicklock on Android using API. So let's dive into it. Before start, I'll assume that you already know what is Keyclock and even more, you should already have Keyclock installed on your local or public machine. In my case, I have installed Keyclock on Docker and as you can see, everything works fine and I can connect to it. Before going further, let's see our Keyclock panel. Let's log in to our admin account. Usually it's admin and password test from 1 to 5 so I'm in you should have your realm account it's uh, really easy to create it you just press uh, add realm and uh, like make your name for this realm account I already have one and I already have set up it so let's see it the most important part here will be clients. You must create new client and uh, let's see what you need to change there. I already have my client, it's called login. And uh, you must have all settings, settings which I have here. For example, client protocol must be open ID connect. Access type should be confidential, and so on. Uh, root URL you may have in our, but I have localhost, and my port is 80. In advanced settings, as you can see, there is access talking lifespan. Let's make it five minutes. And one more important part is these settings. This should be browser and direct grant. In credentials, you should have client and secret. These are the most important uh, settings here. Let's see what else we can and should change. We must create a new user. Now I have my user, but let's create new one. I will create test user with test. Ah, we don't need an email. Yes, user enable. Yes, let's create it. As you can see, user is created. Let's change his credentials. Let's make it 12345, 12345, and uh, we won't make it temporary. Set password. Okay, now everything is uh, ready, so let's dive in into Android Studio. I have already prepared our project and is, as you can see I have two classes. One of them is menu activity and also I have login activity. They are almost empty. As well I have activity menu where text you says you're logged in and also I have activity main where we will have our login forms. I already made some simple example. So let's go in code. Let's first of all configure our Android manifest. What we need to have here? We should have access to internet. So let's use uh, permission. Permission internet. As well, we must use uh, clear text traffic to connect with uh, Keyclock, so let's uh, add it as well. This one and this one. Then let's go to Gradle scripts and find 
Build Gradle, Model App. Here we must add implementation to use Retrofit 2. This is a library to work with API. Some of you, I think, are already familiar with this, so it would be easier for you. Let's sing it. Nice. Before working with Geeklog, we should uh, set up our API environment. That's why we will create a retrofit client instance. So let's make it happen. And what we will have there? We will have static variable called uh, retrofit. Also, we will have string, which will be called base gorilla. And here will be our link to key clock. Also, we will create here public static method called get retrofit instance. And let's put this part of code here. We will check if retrofit is null, and if not, we will create a new instance of it. What else we should create? This is interface and we will call it get data service. We will store here method, post method, it will call get access token because we will get access token and refresh token and a lot of more information from key clock. That's why we need to post this method to get information. And all these variables, we need to provide them to Keyclock to get access token back. As you can see, we don't, we haven't created access token yet. So let's do it. I will paste it. We won't need all of them, but if you want to use some of them, you can write them down. In this tutorial, we won't use uh, most part of them at all, but in new ones, we will use, I think, most part of them, maybe session state, not before policy, we won't use them. So now we are almost there. Let's go to login activity and let's create new method. Public void. Let's call it get access token. And what we must have here, we should have our get data service which we already created, this one. And we must uh, get our password and our username. I found the problem. I used it, uh, my edit text in the wrong class. And that's why I move it here. Now everything should be more clear. Now let's use uh, this variables in our get access token method 
let's create strings here. Let's call it password and it will be <coughs> equals this text to string. Let's make one more. Let's call it username. Let it be our username, edit text, text to string. Nice. Let's now make actually our call, which will have all variables we should provide to key clock. Now I will show you where to get them and what they should be. Okay, as we can see in get data service interface, first of all, we need to have client ID. Our client ID is right here in clients. We already created login. Login actually is our client ID, so let's put it login. Then grant type, it will be password. We don't need to find it. It will be always password. Then is our client secret. Client secret, we can find it in our client settings in credentials. Let's copy it and put it right here. Let's now fill scope fill. It should be open ID. For you, it also would be open ID. Then will come our username and password. That's all information we must provide to Keyclock. So let's let's move further. I will paste piece of code here. What this piece of code does? It makes call to retrofit and we can make response or failure. We have if our response is successful, then we will uh, get our access token. But if not, we will show users some toast with error message. But what else we need? We need to make intent to our menu activity to understand that everything was fine and to see our your logged in text. So like, well, let's make this happen as well. Let's make new intent. 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 New intent. And from this activity to menu activity class, not actually this, but login activity this. And let's start it. Actually, and let's start it, login activity, this start activity from this intent, yep. Now we almost have everything ready, except we are not calling get access token method. So let's uh, create a button for this. Let's call it button login and let's find it. And let's make listener for it. Set on click listener new. You on click listener and let's call it here. Now what I will show you, let's, let's remove this one. I will 
launch our M letter in debug mode to show you all response we will have from the clock. Actually, what I forget from the last time, I forget to put our URL here. So let's put it up. That's my local host, but you may have uh, your, your key clock on public machine, so it could be something else. But for me, that's what I have. So let's try once again and hope it will work now. So let's see. Yep, let's write down our user's credential and login. So as you can see, our response was successful. This is message, it says OK. And let's see in body what we have here. We have access token, we have ID token, we have refresh token, some scope. We will talk about it a little bit more in the new videos, but now that's all we we are locked in. So let's see. Yes, you're locked in. And if we now open Keyclock, we will see that in our user test user. Let's open it up. Let's open sessions. We have our sessions. That means that everything works fine. In new video, I will show you how to log out and how to get some information with user. So I hope that you like this video. Consider to subscribe. Also, if this video was helpful for you, please uh, become my Patreon or donate for PayPal. All links will be in description. So I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.